I have a problem. I've got 10 days of holiday and I wanna get sun and beach. And I wanna go outside of Europe and experience great new food and new culture, great music. But I don't have unlimited funds. So where do I go? Hmm. Zanzibar. Hey there fellow travellers, welcome to this travel guide that's going to take you through a 10 day epic journey through Zanzibar. I just spent 10 days there in April, make sure you hang on until the end because I'll be sharing with you a way that you can save lots of time, money and energy before you go. Starting in Stonetown, making your way down to Kizimkazi, up the east coast past Jambiani and then go all the way up to Nungwi and Kendwa. Make a little stop to get to Nimba Island and then head back down to Stonetown before you depart. Did you get that? Don't worry, we're going to break that down for you slowly. Zanzibar is an archipelago consisting of several islands, with the largest one that most people know as Zanzibar being called Nguya. Located just off the east coast of Tanzania, this paradise is also known as the Spice Island because of the large production of cloves, cinnamon and nutmeg. It's a place where African, Arabic and European influences all blend seamlessly. I would say 10 days really gave us a good feel of the island. We were able to do a whole lot of experiences, but we also didn't feel too rushed. There is a smaller island called Pemba just off the Nelf that would have been nice to have seen. So if you have an extra four days and you can do two weeks there, I highly recommend that. There is so much to see in Zanzibar and it's a lot more than just Stonetown and Nungui where all the tourists head to. Stonetown is the capital and where you'll fly into. You might have to take an indirect flight, potentially through Ethiopia. Prepare for a long wait but once you land also making sure you take advantage of the incredible views on the plane on the way but once you land in Stonetown you'll start to see the hustle and bustle of this amazing city if you are really interested in history then make sure you catch the old fort the Sultan's Palace the House of Wonders if you're a lover of music then it's also where Freddie Mercury was born so I spent a good bit of time in the Freddie Mercury Museum and I just cried when I saw this wall where it was just handwriting of songs that he had written and never published. So it was worth it just for that. I highly recommend going to that museum, even though it was just a tiny little room. Now, Stonetown really comes to life at night where a lot of the tourism and the hustle and bustle is concentrated around the Forest Honey night market. There you can get food from lots of different vendors, all selling more or less the same thing. I definitely got scammed on the first night. I can't say maybe everyone would be happy to go for the fish. That kind of depends on you and whether you have an industrial stomach. So stuck with meat for the first night, but overall the food was really tasty. One thing I was really surprised to find out was how many people speak Italian? A lot of the vendors would have Italian nicknames, so they were called Giuseppe or Capitan Findus. And you're just like, what? Apparently what's happened is there's a large influx of investors coming in and opening resorts, hotels, restaurants. A lot of the people working in the service industry have just adapted, they've picked up a couple of words. I was super impressed by some people actually being able to carry out full-blown conversations. While we were at the night market, we started getting some information about Prison Island and Nakupenda, which are some of the must-visit sites. The journey takes about 45 minutes and you just soak up the island's fascinating history. Obviously, as the name goes, this used to be a prison. It's not an active prison. Now you're just able to see um, a lot of tortoises hooking up. So, hey, if that's your... <sighs> If that's your thing. Next, we got to Nakupenda, which is the first sandbank I've ever seen. This was paradise. We even met this lovely local fisherman who was showing us all of the things that he caught that day. Some massive slug thing that I hope I never see again. They gave us a feast of delicious fish, just this enormous platter prepared for us. On the whole sandbank, there were about 10 other couples. So thank you, low season, we were able to really make the most of it. There isn't great public transport arranged in Zanzibar. You'll find some public transport which are called daladalas. Effectively, they're privately run minibuses which will shuttle you towards to the main areas in Zanzibar. The Dalla Dollars just move when they're ready and they're full and you should pay when you get on the bus. You can't book online, there are no schedules. I would highly recommend if you can drive, get a car so that you're able to make the most of the island. The 
person that hired the car to us said, pretend you don't speak any English. And we thought that was weird when the police stop us, but turns out there can be quite a lot of asking for bribes. In 10 days, we got stopped six times by police on this. So day three takes us to Kids in Pazi. It's a little coastal village, really famous for dolphins. Went on this amazing dolphin spotting adventure. It was just us on a boat. Once again, thank you, low season. It's supposed to be easier to see dolphins in the morning, but I think that also means that a lot of tourists went in the morning and we didn't go until the afternoon. So there were maybe three boats out in the water with us. Super lucky. Now, our guide was superb. He literally was like, there are the dolphins, come to this side of the boat, dive now, go. And he just directed us to where we got to a point where you've just got this entire family of dolphins swimming past you. And we've got these two dolphins looking up. On our way back, we chose to drive over closer to Giambiani. We had this amazing lunch at Lekka Kaleka, which is famous now for its octopus dish. I went back three times. I said day three was a really busy day. We decided to head over to Jazani Forest, which has a lot of rare wildlife, beautiful monkeys, the endemic red colobus monkeys, so much other wildlife, and explored the forest with a guide who was really, really knowledgeable. So I highly recommend that tour as well. Our next stop is the remarkable Kuzu Cave. It's this underground adventure. There's a wonderful guide, Eric, who we're so grateful for. We, we loved it so much, we went back the next day as well incredible natural beauty I mean the photos are never ever gonna do it justice right but we had a really nice evening there got to understand a little bit more about local life from it and we were done that was already an exhausting day so we settled into our hotel Our hotel is called Gem Beach Bungalows and it's probably my favorite space uh, that we stayed in Zanzibar. Just this incredible view. You wake up and you walk out of the bungalow and you're just on the sand. Since we had such a busy day on day four, Day five, we wanted to do something more relaxing, so we just really enjoyed the beach bungalow. And then later on in our day, we made our way to The Rock, which is world renowned. And we wanted to see what all the fuss was about because it's this restaurant on a giant rock in the middle of the sea. So obviously we wanted to get there. We did. We didn't actually have dinner. Um, and I we, we just went for cocktails and dessert because we had another plan for dinner. I can't say that the desserts lived up to our expectations, but the view is incredible. As the sun started to set, we got to Kai Beach, where if you want a little bit more dancing, particularly in the high season, there's a lot going on. That's where everyone will congregate. There was music and dancing around a bonfire. We were able to swim as the tide was high, and you could watch this stunning sunset and just be in the water. In fact, when we walked past there the next day, there was no water for kilometers. That evening, we stayed at Afia by the Sea, which is this little compound complex that's right on the eastern tip of the island. It's just on a rock and all you see before you is sea. You, you're still close enough to walk past Kai Beach and we did a very long walk that morning and our host Moody just prepared a wonderful meal for us. It felt very special and unique to be in a place where there weren't all that many people. If you're looking for something a bit more special, quite romantic, then we recommend Afia by the Sea. So I'm going to leave links to all of these down there. So if you choose to make a booking, make a small commission at no additional cost to you. Waking up the next day is when we headed all the way up to Nungui, which is the part that all the tourists rave about. It's where you'll find a lot of the nicer resorts, nicer restaurants, but you definitely want to see Nungui because it's also some of the nicest beaches. There's a reason that the touristy spots become quite touristy because they are really very beautiful. So we spent the first night there at Chica Chica. And then the next day was a very special day because it was my birthday. Woke up and had this wonderful coconut. And then I just wanted to spend the, the day having a really chill day by the beach. I had Kenswa, which is just a little bit further down, had beautiful beaches. So it spent the day really chilling on the beach and found this cool little place with great music that we sat down and had a bit of a light brunch. And after that, we got a beach massage, which I definitely recommend you get, but make sure again that you are negotiating for it. We had dinner at the Sexy Fish restaurant, really amazing restaurant. The staff even sang happy birthday to me and came out with a cake and made loads of music. It was, it really made the day super, super special. When we woke up on day eight, we wanted to explore the local life. So we're staying in this lovely hotel with air condition and a view of the sea and you look outside of the window and there's this local village and there's no air condition, there's no electricity, there's no running water in the houses. 
So we wanted to walk within the local village and got in and played with the kids. They were really friendly. They wanted to show us the games that they were playing. These girls were incredible. The way they could skip rope, let me tell you, I tried and tried and just failed and they were all laughing at me and it was hilarious. Um, so then we wanted to thank them for the fact that they let us play and like join in their community and the teacher was trying to line all the kids up so that they would take the sweets and they were like running and shoving each other to try and get the sweets. I don't think I've ever felt that, that if I didn't push that there wouldn't be any sweets for me and that's just like the harsh reality. So again, it's a bit of a reality check, which I think is important to have because that is how local life is. Moving on, we headed to Nemba Island, which is known for its exceptional snorkeling opportunities. The only people that can visit the actual Nemba Island are the people who are guests of the Member Island Lodge. It's a resort of 10 private bungalows and they're owned by Bill Gates. But the boat trip out there to do some snorkeling is definitely worth it. Just stick a piece of bread in your mouth and watch all the fish come to you. It's actually kind of scary because you feel like you're going to be eaten by all the millions of, of little fishies, but it's also really cool. And finally, rounding off our trip, we couldn't help but also stopping at Kizimbani Farm. Given that Zanzibar is so famous for his spice, we had to take some spices back for all our friends and family and to, to bring some stuff for us. It wouldn't have been worth doing a tour because of the rain and so we just stopped at the spice shop. You will be ambushed by a whole load of people and this happens quite regularly like offering new tours, offering new tours. So don't be afraid to just say no thank you, go in and then if you want to buy some spices make sure you are negotiating. Definitely pick up some vanilla coffee, vanilla everything that they make is just super lovely. Cinnamon and cloves and all the local spices and um, even some curry mixes so that you could recreate some of the dishes that you had on Zanzibar. Finally, on the way back to the airport, we did stop in Stonetown to have a look at Tanzanite. So Tanzanite is this rare gemstone that's a thousand times rarer than diamonds and it's just this beautiful blue. It's increasingly more blue the higher quality it is. And again, negotiating is still the thing. So we had prices for these stunning earrings that started at $2,000 and then by the end of it, it was $900 with a special price. And that, my friends, concludes our unforgettable 10-day adventure in Zanzibar. If you do have any questions, pop them in the comments. I'm super happy to help. But before we part ways, I have a very valuable tip that I know is going to save you time, energy and money while on the way. It's a little ebook of all the activities we did on Zanzibar and the price you should be paying so that you don't settle <laughs> for a price that's 10 times more than what you should be paying for that particular activity. So I want to make sure that you're able to make the most of your trip. So click on that link, pop your email address and I'll send you over a free ebook. My name's Eva. If you enjoyed this video, please do like it, share with your friends and subscribe to make sure that you get access to more content to help you learn, earn and travel with me. Thanks so much and safe travel.